Alcan, activated leukocyte cell adhesion molecule, represents a potential breakthrough in multiple sclerosis. Targeting this protein could combine some of the advantages of Tysabri and B cell depleting agents such as Ocrevus and Rituxan. Let's have some fun. To give a little background, let's talk about two highly effective multiple sclerosis drugs. One is Tysabri, natalizumab, a drug which restricts lymphocytes, both B and T lymphocytes, from getting into the central nervous system. It's highly effective at preventing relapses and new MRI lesions, but there's a risk of a rare infection caused by the JC virus, PML. And another drug, such as Ocrevus or Rituxan, these drugs take away specifically B lymphocytes and have no effect on T cells, so the risk of PML is very low. But there are other side effects, infusion reactions, general infections, for instance, serum sickness. But ALCAM is very interesting in that it has a specific effect of B cell homing to the central nervous system. So potentially, it combines the advantages of these drugs and takes away some of the disadvantages. It doesn't deplete cells, so it doesn't weaken the immune system. And it doesn't take T cells out of the central nervous system, which increase the risk of PML. So that's what ALCAM is all about. And I'll go ahead and post some links to the articles in the notes below, and you can take a look for yourself. By the way, I'm Brandon Bieber, and I make videos about multiple sclerosis every Wednesday. So please subscribe and ring the bell for notifications. So what is ALCAM? Well, it's a cell membrane protein, and it's actually cluster of differentiation CD166. So for instance, CD3 is a marker of T cells, CD4 is a marker of helper T cells, and CD166 is the marker of cells that have ALCAM and can potentially go into the central nervous system through this receptor. And the receptor is ALCAM receptor, which is CD6. And it's on a lot of different cells, but mostly in the immune system, B cells, T cells, thymocytes, natural killer cells. And it was actually originally researched for cancer because it turns out that this protein is expressed by many cancer cells. And if you look at the structure of the protein, you can see CD6, which is the receptor, and then CD166, which is ALCAM on the right-hand side. And this is sort of what it looks like, a schematic of ALCAM binding the ALCAM receptor. And this is how cells get to where they're supposed to be. They have protein, protein, very specific interactions that allows them to home to where they need to be. In this case, it's how specific lymphocytes and other immune cells can get into the central nervous system. So what about ALCAM and MS? Well, this is the brilliant research that we found from the University of Montreal. MS risk is linked to the ALCAM and CD6 gene polymorphisms. In other words, mutations in this gene influence your risk of getting MS. For example, in this specific gene, when the guanine residue is changed to adenine, so G to A, and you have both copies of, of this abnormal polymorphism or variant, gene variant, there's a threefold decreased risk of MS. Now, what does this gene do? Well, it reduces binding to the ALCAM receptor. Another thing is we already have ALCAM binding antibodies. Now they're available only for research purposes. I'm not sure if they would be usable in human disease, probably not. Now the research from University of Montreal shows that ALCAM is involved in specific pro-inflammatory B cell trafficking into the central nervous system, the brain and spinal cord and optic nerve. People with MS, have more ALCAM on their B cells compared to controls. And also they did a study that blocking ALCAM with this drug I mentioned is beneficial in the mouse model of multiple sclerosis, EAE, experimental autoimmune encephalomyelitis. And in this slide, you can see when the drug against ALCAM is used, then there is no binding of the B lymphocytes to the blood brain barrier. But without treatment, you can see these little red dots represent B cells binding and trafficking in to the central nervous system. Well, what about the problems? Well, this drug only prevents the B cells from getting into the central nervous system, not the T cells. Maybe that is part of the mechanism of action of Tysabri. So maybe it wouldn't be as effective as Tysabri. Also, maybe it wouldn't be as effective as Ocrevus 
or rituxan or ofatumumab because it doesn't take away the B cells completely. It only prevents them from getting in. Also, even if it was successful, it may take years, 10 years more for a pharmaceutical company to actually develop an appropriate drug and go through phase one, two, three trials and bring it to market. Also, one study found that Alcam knockout mice, in other words, mice that do not have the Alcam receptor, they actually have even worse EAE. However, this may just be due to the fact that without this receptor at all, there's increased permeability of the blood-brain barrier. Anyways, I think it's really interesting research, and I wanted to give you guys a taste of what early research in individual proteins and in experimental autoimmune encephalitis, what they look like, and how that might portend future advancements in multiple sclerosis that could actually benefit people with the disease. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please post in the comments below.